The late president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, was an advocate for women empowerment. During the Burundi Civil War, only two women were members of parliament, but following his mandate as facilitator for the Burundi peace negotiations, Mr. Mandela was able to advocate for women empowerment, resulting in 30% increase in the number of women MPs in Burundi after the war. With over 51% of Ghana's population being female, representation of women in parliament is rather low. Out of 275 seats in parliament, only 29 belong to women. Former First Lady Nana Konedu Ajiman Rawlings wants more commitment from government, especially to bridge the gap and empower more women for development. What can we as a country do to empower women to be more successful and exercise their rights? I believe that we started this empowerment program more than 30 years ago. I mean, today people are say, behaving as if we are now starting the empowerment. But no, for the past 31 years, into 32 years, we've been talking about just empowering women to be able to stand on their feet politically, socially, culturally, and um, economically. And I think it is the, um, the drive by several women, including my organization and myself, that today we can see a lot of women being visible, even in governance. It wasn't like that before. However, if you look at the, the um, you look at Mandela, his virtues, what he stood for, um, the way he wanted to treat everybody as an equal, did it translate into bringing women on board? The women were part of the fight. Indeed, he made sure that half his cabinet were women. Not just any women, but women of formidable um, uh, disciplines who had had experience in the area that he was putting them. We can learn an example from it. Because, my dear lady, it's not every woman who is gender sensitive. And it's definitely not all men who are gender insensitive. There are some men who are so gender sensitive, they will help to propel the women's agenda. So it was with um, Madiba. And Madiza, Madiba's example, I think, can show all of us that um, when you, you bring a woman to a certain level, you help to develop a nation. We've been advocating for women's rights for over 30 years. 32 In, years. 32 years. Mm -hmm. In that span, looking back now and seeing the women that are coming up, would you say we've made progress? I think that um, in all that we did in these 32 years, mind you, uh, John Nkrumah's time, he used women for his positive action. He used women for the CPP programs and so on. But invariably, it was to give them things to sell, flour, cloth, and stuff like that. We have gone past that. We want to be part of decision making. And from that aspect, we started about 32 years ago. We have made some progress, but changing a mindset is not a day's thing. It's not a day's thing. You have to keep on working at it because a government will come that believes in it, so you move forward a bit. Another government comes, they are not interested in it, it pushes you back. So it's a constant progress, constant reminder of the fact that women are an integral, important part of human development. And the more we leave them behind, the more human development lags behind. So it's important to pull the women along as we are trying to develop our countries, because that's the only way. Yes, we made some progress, but there's still a lot to be done. Deborah Smolilumute, reporting for ETV News.